What's up? I'm Armor26 here, here to give you a two-part video. The first part will be entitled, Thank You, Takashi Sugera. I'm going to go over his lengthy GHG uh, title reign in Pro Wrestling Noah, uh, from his first title events to when he eventually lost it. Uh, in case you didn't know, he did lose it back in uh, July uh, to Go Shiozaki, so I'll go over all of his title defenses, because we just don't get reigns like his anymore in professional wrestling. Uh, basically, he you know, went, went so long with the belt, and I'll go over that. And the second part is... A semi-response to Sanders Robin 24 uh, on the whole ROH and NOAA partnership. I'll give you all my thoughts on that and what I think should happen and how I would book the NOAA talent. All right, so the first part is thank you, Takashi Sugera. Um, Sugera, uh, and let me say this. Before this title reign, I didn't think anything of Sugera. I thought he was impressive in a tag team uh, with Mara Fuji uh, w because he, they were uh, GHC uh, tag team champions together. Uh most notably, uh, they had that title defense against the Briscoes on the uh, ROH Take No Prisoners 2008 DVD. But, um, other than that, uh, Segura was just a, he was an okay wrestler, you know, I didn't, th I didn't think too much of him. You know, he was good in ring, but, you know, there's just nothing that jumped out ab uh, about him to me. Then the year 2009 starts, and he just seems to improve vastly, match after match after match after match, and, I'm, uh, and I kept my eye on him a little bit, and, and then he, uh, by the end of the year, he was the number one contender to uh, Go Shiozaki's uh, GHC Championship at the time, you know, after uh, Akiyama, uh, on the show where Masawa passed away uh, via backdrop driver, um, he, uh, Mitsuharu Masawa, no, 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 sorry, Jun Akiyama uh, forfeited the belt on that show, to, I think he turned discs in his back, and he couldn't really defend the belt anymore, so the day after Misawa's death, Noah held a match between Rikeshi, Takeshi Rikio and Shizaki to crown uh, the vacant to uh, make the GC Heavyweight Championship not no longer vacant, which Shiozaki, Shiozaki won. Then Shiozaki only had two matches where he defended the title. One of them was against Akitoshi Saito, the guy who inadvertently did kill Misawa. And then uh, the match where he lost the belt to Sugera back in December of 2009. By the way, that was that is Takeshi Sugera's breakout match, in my opinion. That that match is just insane, and you know that that match really set the tone for how Noah was going to be basically not run, but basically the tone that Noah was going to have throughout its company for the next outwards of a year and a half. You know that match is like okay, this is the, this is our top guy, this is our badass, this is our you know he's our guy. This is the guy that you have to watch our company to see. You know he was he was everything in that and more. Like he, he was everything that you want from from a, from your champion if it's a Japanese wrestling company because you know he's all in ring he's all power he's all you know fighting spirit and that's just great. So uh, he actually goes on to his uh, first title defense um, turns out to be Wrestle Kingdom four I believe uh, yeah Wrestle Kingdom four uh, uh, which is the biggest Japanese wrestling show of the year. Um, in the Tokyo Dome, held by New Japan Pro Wrestling, uh, where he defended against my favorite Japanese wrestler at the moment, or one of definitely one of them, my favorite New Japan guy in Oroki Goto. And this match showed that, you know, I don't know whether Sugera had made New, New Japan appearances prior to this. Someone who's a little more knowledgeable in Japanese wrestling can definitely uh, tell you about that. But um, it seemed like the, 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 they knew who he was, but they didn't take him seriously. And they, they had him against, you know, Hiroki Goto, who, you know, is huge and so impressive in everything you want out of a champion for New Japan. And then Sugira came in there and whooped his ass. Like, dra he dragged him around the ring in parts, and then Rogueri fought back, and then he just could not beat Sugira, and that really just made Sugira look like a total, total great champion. Like, 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 like he basically said, uh, anyone who thinks he's a paper champion, was this, was this match was a huge middle finger to all those people. Like, honestly, it was. And, like, literally, it was, watching this match, and, and, uh, I wasn't rooting for Goto because I think Sugera shouldn't have lost in, in his first defense. That would have been catastrophic. But uh, I, I just thought that I wanted to see these two go out there and put on an amazing match, and they did. You know, th this is one of the most underrated matches from all of last year, and you know, I really recommend you guys checking it out. Um, in the description box, I'm gonna have links to all of his matches uh, that I could find. Um, so, all right. Um, then uh, he went on to his next title defense um, versus uh, Togi Makabe, or Makabe, uh, who's another New Japan wrestler uh, in 2010. And this is one of my main minor problems with uh, Shiozaki's title reign. He didn't have a title defense against a true Noah guy until August, at, 
which was uh, I guess eight months after, or almost nine months, well, eight or nine months after he won the belt, which is that's a problem for me. Even in Japanese wrestling, with how they defend their titles, and you know, there's there's a stretch between the Makabe defense and the Takayama defense, where he doesn't defend the belt for over four months, almost five, and and almost five months. That's unexcusable, but you know, I was willing to excuse it because Tsuyeru was just that much better than everyone else in Noah, so it wasn't worth defending the title. Uh, but you know, it's it, it, you still defend the title uh, even if you are clearly the best man in the champion. That happened with other Noah champions. I mean, when Akiyama was champ for the first time and he was clearly better than you know the the, the right guy to hold the belt, he still defended the belt and then lost it to Yoshinari Ogawa. But that's a different story. Um, so he goes into a second title defense with uh, Togi Makabe. This match was uh, st- it was very good. Um, you know, I, I don't remember too much from it because. You know, and this is a problem with Sugiro Star Runners. A lot of his matches kind of felt the same, uh, but not. But but, but but during the first one, um, it, it not it didn't really because we hadn't seen it before. But then they started to repeat after that, um, and this is kind of setting the tone for those type of matches. This match went about, I think this match went out, went around thirty minutes. This was definitely one for his longer title defenses. Uh, so, and, but but these two had pretty good chemistry. I, I'm not the biggest fan of Makabe, so uh, I wasn't too into this match, but still made Sugiro look good. Then we waited until the 10th year anniversary shows uh, where he defended the title against Yoshihiro Takayama, his third title defense. This is one of his shorter title defenses, um, but it still was a lot of fun to watch. One of the best matches for the time it went during the year in Japan. Um, lots of great fighting spirit. You know, Shigeru always does great against men that are bigger than him. And being, you know, that he's, he, it's not that he's a, a light guy. He, he's just a shorter wrestler. So, you know, he always does better in, in the heavyweight division when he faces guys that are taller than him. Uh, and heavier as well. Uh, so this this match is no exception to that. I'm a huge Takayama fan, you know. The, only in Japan can you have the, the fatter the wrestler is, you know. He's in sh- he, he's fat, but he's in shape, you know. You know, uh, you know. And I, and I said uh, based off of I think Takayama's match last year with Morishima, that was one of the best fat man matches of all time. Both of the kind of out of shape, but both can still work like motherfuckers. Um, so, and Morishima has gotten a lot bigger since his, since his ROH days. So that was very impressive to me. But anyway. Um, yeah, this match just, 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 Sugiro's power was definitely on display here. It was great to see, and I really, really, really thought Sugiro was the top man in all of Japan at this point in the year. Because, I mean, the New Japan was kind of hot shotting its title this, this point last year. Went, it went to, from Nakamura to Makabe to Kojima to now Tanahashi. You know, it was, I was like, uh, give someone a long reign in your company. And now Tanahashi's getting that reign, but whatever. Um,. Right, then we get to August of last year, his first defense against the true Noah guy in Jun Akiyama. And everybody, I guess, had been waiting for this match for upwards of around, uh, I'd say about a year, longer than a year, 14 months about, because, you know, Akiyama never got his rematch. And, I mean, it's, it's a rare thing in professional wrestling when you vacate a title. You know, and there isn't an automatic rematch clause in Japanese wrestling all that time, you know. You know, it, it's a lot like Ring of Honor where you have to re-earn your shot. Not like in the WWE or TNA when you have an automatic rematch clause, you know. Um, so, you know, uh, Akiyama kind of did get his rematch here. And Akiyama gave it one hell of a fight. Um, but Sugeru just was, just just one-upped him in basically every style of this match. You know, Akiyama definitely brought it. But Sugeru was definitely, he was the pace setter, you know. He was a little bit more crisp. And that's probably because Akiyama's older than he is, but... You know, and Akiyama in the 90s is just a fucking monster in the early this decade. And this match with Kobashi in 04 is on touch. It's still my favorite na- match in Noah history, but, you know, uh, just great stuff here. Um, absolutely great stuff. Um, definitely loved this match. Uh, and made Sugara look good. Uh, and one, one, mistake, uh, one mistake Noah made, and I want to touch on this, that we never got the Shiozaki Akiyama match during his first title reign for the rematch. Hopefully we get this now that he's back with the title. If it doesn't happen, I'm going to be pretty pissed. So, uh, But then Su- Shizaki got his rematch uh, September 26th of last year. I was not into this match as much as most other people were. I, I just didn't feel it. I don't know what it was. Uh, th- this is a longer title defense from him, but I just didn't know. I, j- I, just, I just didn't. Uh, seeing his match um, last December, and then we got this. It was, it, they are two different matches, but it was like... Eh, I just didn't feel it for whatever reason. I mean, it made Sugara look very good, saying that, you know, the man who he beat, he could beat again. Um, so, you know, it was still it was still very, very good, um, but I just didn't think it was amazing as other people did, so whatever. 
Um, and then we got to uh, his title defense versus uh, uh, Chessman from AAA. Uh, his, his shortest title defense lasted about nine minutes. Um, nothing much here, you know. Nothing you won't see in any other title defense room outside of it taking place in Mexico. So there's that. Um, then we got his okay. Then we got his match against Morishima, and this match is Sugera's best during his title reign. This match is insane. Just everything Sugera does here, you know, it was like Morishima is this unstoppable. It was literally the un- the immovable object versus the unstoppable force versus the immovable object in this match. You know, it it really seemed like you cannot put down Morishima. This guy is gonna rip your head off. You know, th- this guy, you know, he is just a fucking monster. And they booked him as such, and that was awesome to see during the late 2010 for Morishima. And then Sugera could beat him. And the only way he could beat him is by legit almost knocking him out. Like, you had to almost kill him to beat him. And then, so that made Sugera look like a, such a total badass. And, you know, this match did not lack, you know, action, did not lack spots, did not lack Sugera almost breaking his neck twice. So... There's that, and that was his seventh title defense. If you haven't seen that match, go out of the way and see it. These should all be in the description box of everything that I can find on YouTube I'm going to put in there. Um, then we got uh, Sugera versus Bison Smith. Now, I'm going to say this. This is where his title re- defense has started to become kind of glued together for me. Like he, he is an amazing wrestler and all, but I gave him uh, best brawler last year during my year-end awards for 2010, but these started to feel like the same title defenses to me, you know, the ones with Smith, Bernard, Murdoch, and Suzuki, all just started to feel the same. Uh, started to feel like the same to me, and I don't know why, but you know, uh, um, it, it just did, and you know, especially with Bison Smith, who I'd seen in person in Ring of Honor before, and it was just, I, I don't know, I, I just, I just didn't feel this match all that much. I thought it was good, but I just didn't think it was anything special. And that's the exact same thing I would say about Segura versus Bernard. You know, he he brought it, but it, it it just didn't click. You know, and he had done well against New Japan talent in the past, so I I just was thrown off by this a little bit. And then exact same thing for Murdoch. You know, Trevor Murdoch. You know, from the WWE as a tag team with Lance Cade, um, and then had that minor singing gimmick, which I think was still horrendous to this day. But whatever. Um, you know, Murdoch. I was never a huge fan of Murdoch, even though I uh, he he might work in Japanese wrestling. You know, he's he's kind of the sloppy type wrestler that could work, but then he didn't bring it in this match with Sugera. So whatever. Then we get to Sugera versus Minoru Suzuki. Okay, Minoru Suzuki. I'm not a fan of his, and this match shows exactly why. I don't want to say why because I don't want to ruin it in this match. But I did not. This was his worst title defense. I mean, ugh, this was nauseating to sit through, and I can't believe I'm saying that about a Sugera match, but. Still shocks me to this day that I sat through this match. Wow. But see it for yourself. And then it comes to his two title defenses uh, during the UK Noah shows. I haven't seen either of these yet uh, versus Dave Mastiff. I heard it was great, according to Big Rat. Um, posted that on his Twitter. And then Suzuki was another title defense. So I imagine it was good, but it wasn't anything special. But I have seen the l- most recent two matches from Sugera. Um, Sugera versus Claudio. I gave four and a quarter on my uh, uh, WXW... Uh, or the Noah Germany show review because it was awesome. I loved it, um, every sense of the word. Um, and this is his best title defense I have seen uh, in 2011. Um, well, until he lost the belt, but you know, th- this match really showed that Castagnoli c- could work with anyone. And then Segura, it wasn't really his fault that his title defenses sucked. To it, it, it's only half his fault, you know. So, and then we get to the match where he loses the belt. Um, his 15th title defense, he loses it uh, back to Shizaki because there's no other man in Noah that could really take it from him. Um, so, you know, but this match was awesome. I saw that AMC and one gave it three and three quarter stars. Uh, this match is at the very least great to me. I mean, uh, we do have different opinions, and I I love hearing what he has to say. And we are, and this is the reason I like being a part of this community because we have so many different opinions. But it just I, this match to me just had a dynamic that I loved. Well, I'll say it like this. I loved the story behind this match. Like, this is legit. Shizaki is, like, saying to himself, as the time gets on, what do I have to do to put down Sugera? You know, no, no one could put him down. You know, all across the world, you know, you have a Swiss wrestler. You know, you have all these different wrestlers. No one could beat him. What do I have to do? And legit, it took five or six finishers to put him away. 
it wasn't overkill because legit the story behind the match made it seem like he had to do that to beat him. You know, it wasn't overkill at all. So I I loved it. I'm giving it I'm giving it four and a half. I thought it was an amazing match. Um, it's it's gonna be one of my weaker four and a halfs, but it was still four and a half. It was still an amazing match to me. So check this out if you haven't seen it. It's definitely a moment. Uh, because 581 days later, we have a new uh, GHC Heavyweight Champion finally. Uh, second longest reign in Noah history behind the Kenta Kobashi one that lasted from March of 03 to March of 05, I, I believe. Um, right around then, right over two years. Um, so definitely props to Sugera. Stuff like this just does not happen in professional wrestling anymore, and I really want to give him his props because he deserves it. And, you know, he made me want to check out a lot more Japanese wrestling for Noah just because of how he set the tone for Noah. And, you know, there were a lot of great other stuff in Noah last year, but, you know, he really just owned it for me. All right, the second part of this video is going to be on a semi uh, response to Sanders Robin and then just ra random talk about what I think the Noah ROH relationship should be going forward. Um, in the news wires, they've been saying how they want a stronger relationship with Pro Wrestling Noah and they want to bring the talent back to the States from Pro Wrestling Noah. Um, first off, thank God. Uh, <laughs> I've wanted to see them back in Ring of Honor. Now. I've wanted to see these Noah guys in person for now around four years. So, you know, it would be great to see them. Uh, and, you know, I want to see them even more now that I missed going to the New Japan shows. And I, I need to see some of these Japanese guys in person. You know, they, they're, I just love so many of them because they're just great and different. And, you know, Noah is my favorite Japanese company. So I, I want to see these guys. Um, And one point I definitely want to make is I want kind of the leader of the foreign talent to be Nakajima. And let me say why it's Nakajima, you know. People have seen and can watch in the ROH uh, archives uh, a lot of matches from Mara Fuji and Kenta. And um, those are the two guys that are really owned Ring of Honor. And, you know, they've had the five-star, the four and three-quarter star matches in the past. You know, they had back-to-back -back matches on Lord of Honor uh, Five Night Two. And, you know, I, I and, and so Nakajima, I think, is the guy who can really lead all the Noah guys want to come over and just tear it up. You know, I think Elgin... Uh, my, sorry, I'm going to bring up Michael Elgin because I think Nakajima versus Elgin could be a match that could just make both men stars. Especially Elgin. Because he his home company now is Ring of Honor. So, you know, I, I, I really want to see this match. And I'll, and I'll get into... You know, because I think the first show they will return at will be WrestleMania weekend in Miami, which I will be going to and I can't wait. And But I'm not guaranteeing it will be there, but, you know, Miami is just going to be insane for me. But, um... All right, um, where was I? Uh, okay, the Noah uh, talent. All right, one problem I have with the Noah talent coming over is I don't want them. I don't want to go back to the, for lack of a better word, the Gabe way of things. Um, Gabe was a little bit too reliant on the Japanese talent and how the Japanese talent were booked in Ring of Honor and just how he made any time he needed someone, he used the Kenta or the Marafuji instead of a at the time he outside of Brian Danielson that was it, because Brian Danielson was the champion. Then maybe Austin Aries and Roderick Strong, because they were the tag champs. And then maybe Nigel McGuinness, but that, that's cutting it, because I think Kenta was over Nigel McGuinness, out, and probably Austin Aries and Roderick Strong. Outside of Brian Danielson, you know, I think Kenta was the main priority for Gabe in 2006 in Ring of Honor. Um, But, well, in the CCW thing, but that's a few that's completely different than bringing over talent. Um, But, you know, I, I want to use them in the sense to make their appearances mean something. So a little bit farther and fewer in between than they were in 2006. Um, you know, we don't need them every weekend. We we don't need them once a month. I could I could deal with three times a year they come over. You know, I think that's the perfect amount, you know. And, and they can be like, you know, the, you don't have to bring them in just for B shows to make B shows A shows. You can bring them in an A show to make A shows A plus shows, you know. That's, that's fine with me, you know. And I think I agree with Sanders Robin on the point that if you're going to call Best in the World the biggest show in Ring of Honor history, you know, it wasn't. Uh, it was. It, it had one of the most anticipated matches in Ring of Honor history, maybe the biggest match in Ring of Honor history. But, you know, and maybe one of the better tag team matches. But on that card, you know, there was really not all that much else. I mean, the Steen stuff was awesome, but, I mean, there's not that much else. And I was there live. I, lo I loved the show live, and, it's a, and you know, I still like the show a lot, but, you know... You you really needed you know some outside talent you know the young bucks are fine but you know you needed something else on that card if you're gonna make that claim 
And, you know, the Japanese guys coming in would have been that claim, but, you know, I don't need... I just don't want to get reliant on them, and that's my scare that we're going to fall back into that pitfall. Um, even if, you know, we have guys like the Jim Cornette, and we have a different Bucker now in Delirious, and, you know, all the Sinclair guys that could help out. You know, I don't I don't know. But, uh, well, actually, I do know, because, uh, you know, I know who they are, but uh, anyway. Uh, ROH, um, okay. ROH WrestleMania Weekend in Miami. Here are the matches that I would book to bring the Japanese talent back. The first three guys I bring back are Kenta, Marafuji, and Nakajima. Just those three. You know, no heavyweight guys just yet. Um, there's the reason that I don't think that Morishima can come right back in and just be the Morishima of old. He got his ass kicked by Danielson last time we saw him. So, and, and Nakajima is the last guy to uh, make ROH appearances back in... Uh, Aries versus Richards in the Omega Factory faced uh, Kenny Omega and El Generico. Uh, El Generico's match with them is actually seen on the screen right now, where he's doing an arm drag. Um, you know, all right, here are the matches that I book. Night one, Friday night, Ring of Honor, Elgin and Nakajima. That's that's lights out for me. I can really elevate Elgin because I really because you know I do see Elgin being the one to beat Davy, long long time down the road. Um, and then maybe Davy and Kenta versus Colin O'Reilly, or Kenta and Marafuji versus Colin O'Reilly. Some combination of that. Um, if not, uh, if, uh, Kenta and someone versus Colin O'Reilly. And then if it's not Marafuji, it should be Davy. Um, or we can do Davy versus Marafuji. Yeah, who knows? Um, or Davy versus Nakajima and do Marafuji versus Elgin. That works just fine with me. Um, some combination of that. Then Saturday, on the Saturday show, it's going to be Davy Kenta. For the ROH World title. Um, of course, Davey winning because Kenta can't hold the title because he's a Noah wrestler. Um, and then I want Generico, Marufuji, and then Nakajima versus Roderick Strong in a long, drawn-out match. Not like the one they had back at Super Hard of Honor 4. You know, the ex uh, long, drawn-out 20-25 minute match. Um, I think that would be definitely good uh, to have there. But then going forward, the Noah talent should be used as no more than Noah talent. You know, the fans should take the Ring of Honor talent not only more seriously but as you know this is their home turf they have home advantage when the Noah guys come in you know you can have the Noah guys be total badasses which they are but the, the advantage should go to the Ring of Honor guys whenever you bring them in it should be okay the RH guy calls out the Noah guy not the other way around and stuff like that um, when they come in it shouldn't be I want a match with them you know it should be Michael Elgin wants to face the best in the world, and he wants to prove he's up there with Davey Richards, so he takes on Katsuhiko Nakajima. It should be that type of thing, not really anything else, you know, to bring them in. Uh, if you want to involve a feud with a Japanese wrestler, make it someone you can bring over and have over, not just take a couple months off like you did with the end of the Danielson Morishima feud. That kind of pissed me off back in 2008, and that was a Gabe thing, and that's why I think that, you know, Ring of Honor went away with the Japanese town a little bit because Gabe kind of ruined that a little bit for me. Uh, and a lot of other fans, but, you know, I still love all the Japanese guys, and, you know, I, I hope, I really do want to see them back in Ring of Honor, because I want to see them in person. Uh, a little bit of a selfish thing there, but I'm sure other people are going to be selfish about this, too. I want to see them, you know? Um, but, you know, they have been tearing it up in Noah, and I think, really, people are going to be shocked with how Nakajima looks, you know? If you have not seen the recent Nakajima match, be ready to see, you know, how two years can really change someone. You know, he can be he could be a very successful GHC junior heavyweight champion and go on a long, long reign. You know, he, he has he truly looks like a star now. You know, not not a young boy. He truly looks like a star. So, um you know, uh definitely a lot of Japanese guys that fit the Ring of Honor pro profile Taishi Ishimori would not bring, mind bringing him in. Uh Atsuchi Aoki, I think he deserves a shot. We gotta bring over Akiyama before he retires. Uh, I'm trying to think of other people. Um, who's in Noah? Uh, Shizaki could definitely make a return. Morishima could make a return. Gotta bring over Sugera. I'm sorry, I gotta see this guy in person. Um, I'm trying to think of who else. That might be it. I mean, because of just how ROH works, you know, there are certain guys that you can't bring in, uh, but there are certain guys who you should bring in right away. You know. So, because of how two two different companies work, you know, there's a reason why it's always Eddie Edwards and Davey Richards going over to Japan and Roderick Strong and Delirious. And there's not guys like, um, uh, who who doesn't go over a lot? There aren't guys like, I was going to say like Homicide, but he's no longer in the company, like a Christopher Daniels or like whatever. But those are two bad examples. Um, 
you know, Kenny King doesn't go over there. Rhett Titus doesn't go over there. You know, there's reasons for that. Um, so I, I'm sure I would want, I would like to see that, but you know, there are reasons why. So, uh, all right. Sorry I went uh, 25 minutes there, but oh well. Leave me your thoughts on this video, and I will uh, see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye.